Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I have a mini PC that I will be looking at and doing a little bit of testing with, and this is from Camruai, I believe is how you pronounce the name. So we're gonna get this thing unboxed, and then I'm gonna get it set up and just talk about kind of my general user experience with this. So, opening this up here, this is it. And I've never actually had a mini PC. So I'm gonna be real curious to see how this performs. And this thing is tiny. As a comparison, this is an I, uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max. So that is it. I will make sure that other video pops up showcasing some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about with this. So, got a warning sticker. I'll take that off here in a little bit. So this does have 16 gigs of RAM. The model is the AM06 Pro, and then it has the Ryzen 5500U. So a lot of the handhelds, when we're looking at those, some of them have obviously the Ryzen chips in them, but the same one that you would find in this. And I actually believe, where is that handheld? It's not in here right now, but I do have, one with a 5800U in it. So I'm gonna be curious to see how this does perform compared to that handheld. But let's get the rest of this unboxed here. We will have the power adapter here. So this will plug in here. And then this is a USB type C input in order to power this. It does look like it has plenty of cable length. I like that. And then we have an HDMI cable right here. And then we get to look at the specs. We have a plate. And then this is some type of PCIe input. And then we have some screws as well. So just looking at this again, let's try and find the specs on this thing and cover that really quick. So this plate is a VESA mount plate. So essentially you could mount this to the back of your monitor, which is really cool. So you can turn a regular monitor kind of into an all-in-one PC essentially with that, right? So the user manual doesn't have these specs. I wish it did, but I'm gonna look off of the Amazon listing for this. For the Ryzen 5500U, we have six cores, 12 threads. 16 megabytes cache, 2.1 gigahertz base frequency, and then the 4.0 gigahertz burst frequency. With this, we have the AMD Ryzen 5500U, AMD Radeon graphics. So this is gonna be, as far as I know, the integrated. So you're having the CPU and GPU kind of sharing resources with this. It's kind of on the same, it's on the motherboard and they're together where they will share the 16 gigs of RAM with this if I understand that correctly. And then dual channel DDR4 with this, 16 gigs. It is an M.2 2280, so it should be that full M.2 at 512 gigs for that, but of course you could expand that if you wanted to. We have Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 with this, so 2.4G and 5G. Uh, triple display is what you could run through this. Full functioning type C input. It's saying this can do 4K 60 Hertz. I'll be curious to see how that performs with this. Again, you can mount this to the back if you wanted to, and that should do it. It only weighs 500 grams. It is super light. And then the measurements here, 50 millimeter by 132 millimeter by 132 millimeter. So 50 millimeters tall and then 132 by 132. Again, very small. On the bottom here, we have the rubber spots so that this isn't going to move easily or scratch anything up. And then again, you can mount this with these screws. Let's look at the inputs here. So we have the USB type C input to power this. You have two LAN inputs. You have an HDMI input, a DP input, and then two USB inputs. That's on the back. On the front here, you have an audio in, two USB, which look to be three point, at least 3.0 inputs, and then a type C input. So I think for this, you have plenty of inputs, which is awesome. And then again, you can run 
through this, the HDMI or the DP. And I'm gonna test out running this through the Type-C as well, just to, yeah, cause it's saying video output, it should have Type-C on this. So you should be able to do that. But the Type-C on the back is just for the power. We don't have one for the video output. You would have to use the one on the front. So power button on the front here. And that should about cover it. Looks like we have our exhaust on the side here. So it looks like intake on this side and then exhaust going out the back. And I'll actually pull this apart too so I can showcase what the inside looks like as well. So next part is setting this thing up and then just seeing how it performs. We do have windows on this, so I'm gonna have to actually set up windows then we'll download Steam and we'll test out some games check out some various monitors with this, just to see, again, how it performs. I'm assuming it's gonna do pretty solid at 1080p, depending on the game. Probably not gonna be running high-end AAA titles on this, maxed out, right? But at 1080p, I think it should handle decently, and then 1440p, and especially with 4K, you're gonna see that slide down in performance here. But it depends on what you're doing and what your needs are. Considering the price here, and then just the smaller form factor, this is pretty awesome. You can travel with this thing, right? If you have a portable monitor, which I've reviewed some of those in the past, you could easily, as a matter of fact, I got one right here. You could easily just bring these two things, right? So now I can bring this monitor and this, and you're good to go, right? And this is a 17.3 inch monitor, 1080p, 144 Hertz. So this is a 1080p monitor that would pair very well with this. It also has VESA screws on the back. So technically I could mount this to this most likely. I don't know what the millimeter pattern is off the top of my head, but we might be able to do that. I'll, I'll see if that's something that would actually work. That would be awesome. It's not gonna work inside of this, but if you mounted it to the back and you have another way to just have it in a stand, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up and then let's talk about performance. I'll come back after I've spent a little bit of time with this and then just talk about my thoughts and impressions with this and again, showcase gameplay and how this actually performs. All right, so I've spent a, about two weeks with this machine now and I am quite impressed with what this little box can pump out. So got this thing set up. Again, it has Windows 11 on it. That just took about 10 minutes to set up and then I was good to go after that. And then I started to install Steam and various games and then start testing this thing out. But before I do get to the gameplay, I do want to cover the M.2, so I actually pulled this thing apart, and in looking at that, it, again, it's super simple to pull apart. It's actually the screws that have the little rubber pieces on them so this doesn't slide everywhere. But you just unscrew those, and then you can take the bottom piece off here, and then you will see everything. So you have your M.2, and you can see your RAM as well if you wanted to upgrade that down the road. But again, this is a full M.2, so you could always upgrade this, because I do think with the 512 gigabytes, you will run out of space pretty quick if you are going to be installing games with this but easy to take off and m.2s aren't horribly expensive so that is an easy upgrade underneath this board is the fan i didn't take that out or check that out but it is underneath this if you did want to look at that for whatever reason now it is a quiet fan and this doesn't get very hot so i think it does perform quite well even when playing games which is nice to see Next, this piece right here, I thought it was like a PCIe thing. It's actually just for a SATA cable. A PCIe, if you were going to have an extension, would be much larger than this. I don't know what I was thinking when I was talking about that. But on the board, you can see this just essentially attaches, and then you can plug in a regular SATA cable, and then you have the expansion. If you don't want to go down the M.2 route, you could put a full SSD with this, which is really cool. I don't have one just lying around, so I couldn't test this out, but you can see the brackets here. This will hold to the back of the bottom plate, and then it still fits. So everything still fits, and you get a full size SSD with this if you wanted to. So it's a nice upgrade path. Moving on though, let's talk about game performance here, which has been really good for this small box. I will make sure that I tell you the game and the resolution. So this is Dead Cells running at 1440p, 144 hertz, which is what my monitor can do here. And so with these less graphically demanding games, you can get very high refresh rates, which is quite incredible, again, considering the size of this box here. 
And this just depends on the game itself and then, again, how graphically demanding this is going to be. So 144 hertz with this, again, 1440p, switching over to something like Ori, and this one is running 1440p as well, but it'll cap out at 144 hertz, but you will see it drop lower. So we can see this drops down into the 120s when there's more action on screen, but still very impressive here. And it depends on what games you plan on playing, right? So if you plan on playing AAA titles, then this is going to struggle. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But playing this at 1440p with this good of refresh rate is awesome to see with this. Moving on to a more graphically demanding game, we have Doom Eternal. You're going to have to adjust the resolution. This isn't going to play at 1440p. This is running at 1080p right now low settings and here we have 30s to 40s so you'll see it drop into the like mid 30s but it typically is going from like 38 to like 44 right we'll hit some lower 30s every now and then depending on the amount of action that is going on on screen but in general i was actually quite surprised that this is running 1080p and still performing quite smooth. I know a lot of people are gonna want 60 hertz or they're gonna want more, but with that, you're probably gonna to have to drop this all the way down to 720p in order to actually get that. Hopping into one of my favorite games, Destiny 2. This one is the most graphically demanding game that I'm going to showcase. And so with this, you're gonna to need to drop this down to 720p. It's not really gonna be playable at any higher resolution. So that is something, again, that you have to consider. If you are going to be using this with gaming, are you okay with dropping it down to lower resolutions in order to play certain games? Now with this, it is averaging like upper 30s to mid 40s with this much action going on, which is pretty cool to see. I was very surprised here because I thought this was going to be almost unplayable. Now if you jump into like 1080p, like yeah, it's unplayable. It just It's such a low refresh rate. We're looking at like 20 FPS. It's just too slow, so you're not going to enjoy the game. But with this, especially if you're coming from like a console, which is usually averaging maybe 30 to 60 FPS, this to you is going to feel pretty similar. It's more going to be, is the drop in resolution something that you're okay with? For a box that can travel as easily as this does especially if you've been playing like some of the handhelds like the steam deck or something like that this might be another route that you can actually take which is really cool and it's something i'm actually considering when we travel here in the future which is now i could bring this instead with a portable monitor if i didn't want to mess with a handheld and i could essentially use a bigger screen and still get similar performance where i'm not looking at a very small seven inch screen so let's actually go ahead and hop over now and look at the portable monitor and the performance you could get with one of those. So this is a 1080p 144 hertz portable monitor from Uperfect and the performance here is going to match the other monitor. This is a 17.3 inch monitor but it's capped at 1080p and here I found performance to be pretty identical to what you're going to find on the regular monitor. So you have less graphically demanding games. This one is Hades running at 1080p and you can see it's averaging 120 to 130 FPS here. Again, it's less graphically demanding, but it's running at 1080p. And so if I pop in another game, but it's more graphically demanding, then you're going to see that drop down potentially into the 30s and 40s. And that's just kind of the general thing that I found here. Less graphically demanding games, you can get usually above 100 FPS, maybe all the way up to 144. And then more graphically demanding games, usually we're going to see those in the 30s and 40s. So gaming has been quite impressive, but there are other things that this can do as well, because again, it's just a full-fledged PC, so watching content on this is great. It performs just like any other PC, so if you want to download various apps, or you're going to watch YouTube or anything like that, this is going to perform very well. And then depending on the resolution that you want to run this at, this can run at 4K. So, so far I've run this with a 1440p monitor, we have a 1080p monitor, but let's go ahead and try this out now with a large 40 3 inch 4k monitor so this is the samsung neo g7 43 inch 4k 144 hertz monitor 
I'm just showcasing that this is indeed 4K and that I am running this not technically at 144 hertz. I'm running this at just slightly under 120 hertz because for whatever reason, I think that this is actually overclocking in order to get to the 144 hertz and with that it creates a strobing effect on my camera so to eliminate that i just have this running at the like i said just slightly under 120 hertz and as you can see here it performs just fine and super surprised 4k 120 hertz with this and it still looks and performs very smooth so again the amount of performance that you're getting out of this small box is quite impressive so now I just wanted to showcase some 4K footage that I found off of YouTube. I will have a link for this video in the description if you want to look at it. But this is running 4K 60 hertz. YouTube, as far as I know, doesn't actually allow you to do 120 or 144 hertz or anything basically above 60. But with this, 4K 60 hertz is very impressive with this small box and so everything here has been quite smooth the only time that i've noticed video not being smooth has more to do with the internet connection and not actually the power that you get out of the box so for video if you're doing any streaming i think this is going to be great for that at 4k 60 hertz for gaming so this is dead cells again and we're seeing performance in the like 80s to like maybe 120 it's kind of going all over the place but i'm playing 4k with this so if it's not a graphically demanding game it can do 4k above 60 fps which is incredible again such a small box here with the performance that you're getting out of this i've just been quite surprised and i'm very happy with that if you go to very graphically demanding games, it's probably not going to perform great. But again, you could always just drop the resolution and you can go to 1080p or 720p and still play those games. Outside of gaming, if you're doing any workflow stuff, as long as you're just like typing documents or maybe some light editing to photos, I think you should be okay. Maybe even basic video editing. But if you're going to do anything more intensive, you're going to most likely need a either beefier PC or an external GPU with this because you're just going to need more raw power. For everything else though, just basic needs, some light gaming, I think this is going to be a great PC for that. Now for me personally, I don't have any standout negatives with this product. The only two things that I would want people to be aware of is that the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi to me are a little bit older. So with this, the connection is decent, but if you're going to suffer from anything, it would probably be maybe some stuttering with that. And I noticed it when playing Dead Cells on PC, the controller had a little bit of input lag as I was sitting about eight feet back behind the camera. And then with the internet, the Wi-Fi it, and I have Gigablast, so I do have gig internet. So usually with everything, I have a good connection. But I did notice some stuttering when we were trying to do 4K at 60 hertz. Once it kind of smooths out with that, it's generally okay. So you may want to let it buffer a little bit. But those are just things I would want people to be mindful and aware of. So that's going to wrap this video up. I think this is an incredible mini PC. And the normal price here is normally $480. But you can find this at 42% off right now at $279. And I think that is a solid price point for the performance that you're getting out of this. So if you do just basic desktop stuff, you're typing up some documents, maybe some light photo or video editing, and a little bit of light gaming where you don't mind the drop in resolution if required in order to make the game perform a little bit better so if you're cool with playing certain games at 1080p or 720p or just tinkering around with the settings where again retro style games or any game that isn't graphically demanding you could get pretty good performance where it could be above 60 hertz so you could get anywhere from 60 to 100 or even 144 frames per second with this device and you have the upgradability of this so you could upgrade the m.2 if you needed more storage you could add an SSD, just a regular SSD if you wanted to. You can technically upgrade the RAM, although I don't think it needs it. And then down the road, if you did need a beefier GPU, you could get one of the eGPUs. And with that, it's a rig that essentially allows you to run the GPU, the graphics card external to the device. So that is another option to consider. I like the portability of this. You could take this around with the portable monitors if you didn't want to mess with a handheld. There's just a ton of upside with this product. 
Well, that's going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section. I will make sure to answer that for you there. If you want to pick one of these up, I will have a link for this in the description so you can do that. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. If you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.